More breaking news now. Julian Assange unleashing a hellish surprise on Hillary Clinton. This is pretty big stuff, friends. Hillary Clinton continues her world book tour, making excuses for what happened, despite the fact that the world, including her own husband, Bill, well, they've already told her, you lost, Hillary. You lost. Now, during a recent interview with Four Corners Media, the Ice Queen herself refused to defrost and attacked one of those she blames for her devastating loss, Julian Assange. Take a look. I think Assange has become a kind of nihilistic opportunist who does the bidding uh, of a dictator. Lots of people, including in Australia, think that Assange is a martyr for free speech and freedom of information. Um, how would you describe him? I mean, he's a tool of Russian intelligence, and if he's such a you know, martyr of free speech, why doesn't WikiLeaks ever publish anything coming out of Russia? Isn't he just doing what journalists do, which is publish information when they get it? I don't think so. I think, for number one, it's stolen information, uh, and number two, if all you did was publish it, that would be one thing. But there was a concerted operation uh, between uh, WikiLeaks and Russia and most likely people in the United States to, as I say, weaponize that information. You know, something tells me it's probably not a good idea to unload on the same guy that you blame for taking down your own election, since he's likely even got more information on you. And clearly, well, Julian Assange was paying attention. At 3.50 p.m. yesterday, he tweeted this out. WikiLeaks has a pristine record for accuracy. HRC is not a credible person. The primary cause of her own downfall was her own Machiavellian scheme to elevate Mr. Trump, known as the Pied Piper plan that she had. Our last Russian expose was three weeks ago. And as you saw in that clip, she's like, how come WikiLeaks never exposes the Russians? Um, yeah, there you go. They exposed the Russians three weeks ago. Now, it gets even better, okay? It gets even better. 18 minutes later, Assange, still with Hillary Clinton on, her mind, on his mind, drops this cryptic tweet, which will likely be Hillary Clinton's worst nightmare. Now, it's a series of numbers and letters. It's probably like a pass key to unlock maybe the next data vault, the next data vault to destroy Hillary. Okay, so I'm putting this out there. Maybe this was in, this is a secret message for somebody, right? Some cloak and dagger stuff. Okay, well, he didn't stop there. Nearly an hour later, he went out and hit her again. Yes, clearly Hillary Clinton got under Julian's skin. He put this out. There's something wrong with Hillary Clinton. It is not just her constant lying. It is not just what she throws off, that she throws off menacing glares and sees thwarted entitlement. Watch closely. Something much darker rides along with it. A cold creepiness rarely seen. And he was referencing the clip that we played at the beginning of this report. I mean, you saw that. She is so angry. She is seething with evil and hatred. I mean, it's clear. She's running around the world right now trying to sell this book, trying to give some excuses to what happened. But this, this, this reptilian, cold-skinned, cold-blooded lizard person, she's just not... She, she can't look herself in the mirror. Probably... I mean, I guess they say vampires, if vampires look in a mirror, they don't see their reflection. So I guess she would never really be able to see herself because she's just as evil as a blood-sucking vampire. I mean, we can come up with all kinds of names for Hillary Clinton. I mean, she's just evil incarnate. Uh, she's possessed by the devil. A million different things. Uh, and, of course, Julian Assange, he sees it. He sees it. And he, he made sure he put it out there. So share this out there, if you agree with Julian Assange, that Hillary, well... She's just downright evil. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. We have learned a remarkable amount from the Harvey Weinstein scandal so far. The most powerful man in Hollywood was a serial predator. The press assigned to cover him instead covered up for him. Self-appointed guardians of women looked the other way, in some cases in exchange for cash. The corruption was total and complete. NBC's role is especially shocking. Executives at NBC News knew exactly what Harvey Weinstein was doing nearly a year ago. And yet instead of reporting it, they did their best to keep that information hidden from public view. 
thanks to the legwork of their former anchor, Ronan Farrow, NBC had taped interviews with a number of Weinstein's victims. They even had Weinstein himself confessing to groping a model caught on audio tape during an NYPD sting operation. NBC had Harvey Weinstein cold, busted. No honest editor in America would have passed on that story. And yet NBC News chief Noah Oppenheim did pass. He claimed there still wasn't enough evidence to run. So the network killed it. NBC standards for what is news have changed quite a bit in a short period. Just a year ago, that network leaked the now famous Access Hollywood tape to the Washington Post on the eve of a presidential debate, apparently hoping to influence the outcome. NBC could not air that tape itself due to legal concerns, but its executives had no qualms about secretly passing that story to another news outlet and then repeatedly lying about it. Noah Oppenheim may have been at the center of that scandal as well. David Farenhold, the Washington Post reporter who somehow wound up with the Access Hollywood tape, was Noah Oppenheim's classmate in college at Harvard. They worked together on the school newspaper. Reportedly, they were friends. Now, NBC News executives have never explained how that tape, which was their company's proprietary property, got from NBC's offices to David Farenhold at the Washington Post. And they're still not saying. But you wouldn't be crazy to connect the dots. And by the way, and it may or may not be relevant, Noah Oppenheim was a groomsman in Chelsea Clinton's wedding. By the way, NBC called us within the past hour denying Noah Oppenheim leaked that tape. Take that for what you will. But NBC is not the only discredited figure in this saga. Celebrity lawyer Lisa Bloom sells herself as a fiery champion of the oppressed. Bloom once sued the Catholic Church over its sex abuse scandal. She sued the Boy Scouts because at the time they didn't admit girls. She represented one of Bill Cosby's accusers and three women who said Bill O'Reilly sexually harassed them. She's on television all the time, the Al Sharpton of the feminist movement. Yet in the case of Harvey Weinstein, Lisa Bloom took the side of the predator over the prey, likely because the price was right. In the original New York Times piece exposing Weinstein's behavior, Bloom appears as Weinstein's attorney, advisor, confidant, explainer-in-chief. She tried to explain away his behavior as the fumblings of a confused relic from an earlier age. In her words, an old dinosaur learning new ways. According to Lisa Bloom, Weinstein didn't realize that groping terrified women might be perceived as, quote, intimidating. Well, within days, the public outcry over Weinstein's crimes became so intense that Lisa Bloom, sensing diminishing returns, fled the scene. She began denouncing Weinstein herself. She really had no idea how bad Harvey was, she said. Right. But now new reports indicate that Lisa Bloom's PR campaign for Harvey Weinstein may have gone well beyond spin into something much darker. In a Facebook post over the weekend, actress Rose McGowan, who says Harvey Weinstein raped her, accused Lisa Bloom of something approaching bribery. McGowan says Bloom contacted her and offered secret payments if she would recant and declare Harvey Weinstein a changed man. Lisa Bloom denies this. Are her denials believable? We'll let you decide. But before you do decide, consider a long and well-sourced piece in the Columbia Journalism Review this weekend accuses Lisa Bloom of similar behavior in yet another sexual harassment case. This is of an Amazon entertainment executive recently fired for propositioning a colleague. As in the case of Harvey Weinstein, Lisa Bloom was paid to provide moral cover for a man accused of predatory misdeeds against women. His career in jeopardy, he hired Lisa Bloom to explain away his problems. And because she's precisely that kind of feminist for hire, Lisa Bloom took the job. Joining us now, radio talk show host Mark Simone. Mark, thanks for joining us tonight. So there are reports that Lisa Bloom had a business relationship with Harvey Weinstein that went beyond your lawyer-client relationship, that he was working to develop a project based on a book she wrote. Have you heard any indication she plans to give that money back? Well, it's like, uh, remember Hillary Clinton said, uh, when asked about giving the donation back, she said there's nobody to give it back to. So <laughs> she may use the same excuse. Uh, you, you know, how do you know when you hit rock bottom, when your own company fires you, when your company has to change the name, when the academy throws you out? I think it's when Lisa Bloom has to leave because you're hurting her reputation. That is it. So, uh, <laughs> but, 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 Lee, but I, I mean, I agree with you completely about Lisa Bloom, and I've watched this for years, and she's for hire. She's, you know, someone who has no more authority, a moral authority, from what I can tell. And yet she is taken seriously by virtually every news outlet out there as a voice of authority on the abuse of women, as a moral voice. 
how unethical is it to be working on a development deal with the guy you're representing in a sexual harassment case? Well, it's the worst thing you could ever do. And I, I, I never saw anybody, uh, except for Harvey Weinstein, destroy their brand so fast. How would uh, yeah. anybody go to her again? When she was first involved, I assumed he hired her just to neutralize her. If you of hire course. an attorney, they can never come against you uh, from the exactly. other side. But it turns out she's been on this for a long time. Rose McGowan says she was offered $6 million. That's yeah. an amazing amount of money. That's how seriously they took this. Harvey is famous for years for uh, offering editors, whoever, uh, screen deals, uh, development deals. Uh, Noel Oppenheim, am I not mistaken that he's a screenwriter who uh, probably might yes. be looking for a deal? And who has at, said that he's had no business relationship with Harvey Weinstein? Well, but NBC Universal, for years, Universal has been distributing uh, Harvey Weinstein's films. Weinstein produces television for NBC, like Project Runway. And think about this. They ran a thousand Trump stories based on anonymous sources. Ronan Farrow came in with a police report, police audio, three witnesses on camera, and they said, you haven't nailed it down yet. I, I mean, the double standard is ridiculous. So here's what I don't understand. NBC has never explained how its property, the Access Hollywood tape, which was shot more than a decade before, wound up moving from NBC's office, offices to the Washington Post. They've never explained. They're going to do an investigation. We don't know the answer. <laughs> Last month... You saw one of the anchors on MSNBC said some unattractive things in a commercial break. The tape was leaked. NBC immediately found the producer responsible for yeah. leaking it and fired him. <laughs> Why can't they find out how that tape got from their offices to the Washington Post? Well, it's being run kind of the same as O.J.'s hunt for the real killers. It's not got a lot of manpower <laughs> in this investigation, but they, they'll never let up until they find it. It's this not an all-hands-on-deck situation, is it? Mark Simone, no. <laughs> thank you for that summary. Good to see you.